the Valley Homes on TV, the Milpitas edition. Todd Flesner here along with Debbie Giordano. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great, Debbie. And uh, we have a great show today. Uh, I think one of a lot of interest for folks, um, people who are in and around real estate, you know that short sales and bank-owned properties are, are really the norm these days in terms of a lot of the transactions going on. Right. And um after 34 years in my industry, I've noticed the last few years there's been a trend, and there are a lot of short sales, which we'll have our guests talk about. But I have met him a, a few years ago, Steve Navaris, a That's short correct. sale expert, and uh, he and I have a couple transactions. We've closed a few and worked together. He's marvelous at the short sale transaction, and he'll describe that and what that is to the viewers Terrific. today. Well, I know that we all get lots of questions about the process, what goes on with that, and we thought you know, that'd be a great topic for today's show. So, Steve, thanks for joining with us on uh, Valley Homes on TV and sharing your expertise with us regarding the short sale yes, process. Yes, I, I appreciate uh, getting the opportunity to be with both of you two today. Yes. Yeah, terrific. Well, you and Debbie know each other, but for the benefit of our audience here, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, How would you get into real estate and then short sales specifically? What what drove you in that direction? Okay, well, I've been in the business for nine years, and I'm currently at Intero Real Estate. And um, five years ago, when I saw the market starting to be a little scary, so to speak, and I took the interest and started doing a lot of education on what I could do to try and help the clients, whether it was learning about the modification process or just in short sale, what in 10, what was a short sale. And I began taking the bull by its horn and started calling the banks. And I remember five years ago waking up at four in the morning and calling these banks and they didn't have a short sale department. Okay, well let time out, let's stop there. We know what a short sale is. Please tell the viewers, what is a short sale? So the definition of a short sale is where the seller's lender or servicer allows the seller to sell the property for less than what the property is owed to the bank. So that is the true definition of a short sale. Okay. Um, so you're short in terms of the money that's required to pay off the loan. Correct. So it's a it's a shortage of money and the bank has to do the proper process in order for them to approve the short sale. Okay. Great, great definition. Terrific. So you did a lot of personal research in this. Um, other than that, I mean, do you have other uh, training or qualifications or certifications in short sales, or is it just school of hard knocks? Um, no, I mean, we there's a lot of training that I, I actually participate to different uh, types of training. Um, and I do work for uh, ResNet and some of these banks. So right now I'm actually doing about 10 BPOs a day. BPO, hold on, okay. this is language. <laughs> yeah, it's for, for the bank, so that's a broker price opinion. Okay. So because lots of these homes are either in the process of doing some type of a modification or short sale process, and since the banks are losing lots of money, they're hiring us as agents to go give a value to the property. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Similar to an appraisal, but um, a little bit different, I imagine. Correct, yes. It's very similar to an appraisal. Some of them are exterior BPOs, where we take only certain photos of the exterior side and uh, interior. Okay, let's use an example. Um, a seller comes to me, and of course I give them in, uh, refer them over to you, they uh, owe $500,000 on their home. They took out a loan maybe two, three years ago. Probably got it through Todd. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but anyway, they, and their home is only worth $400,000 a day. So they've decided maybe they've got to relocate, so they have to sell. Um, and they're, so to speak, underwater, we call that? Yes. Uh, then they come to you, and what happens at that point? Okay, so when we, when we get in front of them, we want to make sure that we give the sellers the opportunity, and a short sale is kind of their last choice. We want to give them the opportunity to try and do a modification first, and um, just like um, Deborah mentioned, if they're relocating or they have a hardship, which is very important because that's one of the key factors that the lender is going to look for to figure out why they're unable to make the payment. And I'm sure with your expertise in the business and being a short sale expert, you're able to guide that client through what types of hardships might be acceptable with the bank. Yes, and that's uh, a definite. So we're able to assist them in what, um, how they should uh, do their hardship letter. Um, once we figure that portion out, we want to figure out 
um, who their lender is and how we're, you know, if it's a homeowner who's living in the property, there's um, a program called HAFA, which is Home Affordable um, Foreclosure Alternative, which is the perfect uh, product for a homeowner who wants to do a, a short sale and is going through this hardship situation. The lender at the close of escrow will contribute $3,000 for relocation so that they're Which able to... We have a transaction we're working on now that's, that's yes. going to occur. So um, can I ask one more question? So how long does the process take from start to finish? I've heard horror stories. I've experienced some... <laughs> Some quick ones. Uh, I think we had a short sale. I did one in 60 days or something, yes. which was timely. But what typically is the process time? So that, that's a great question. Um, there used to they used to take anywhere from 90 to 300 days, realistically. But because we've been doing them for so long, we're able now to get them pretty much about 45 days. I think is a typical transaction. Um, but the most important part is that the seller must be willing to give all their documentation because we don't want to keep going back and forth and the sellers just can uh, the lender excuse me is going to continue um, getting documentation but that that's why it's very important and there's a few different types of short sales so it's very important that you contact us uh, so that we can guide you guys because we can actually do a short sale without even having an offer on the table. We can get an approval and let the bank give us a price that they want us to list it. Perfect. Right. Yeah, so. I've actually been involved with a short sale that was as short as two weeks um, wow. from the time Be we were in contract. Because closing, the bank had approved it. Because it was pre-approved. Pre yes. Yeah. But that, that is not the norm, unfortunately. The, yes, that is not the norm. That's why it's very important that whether you're on the buyer side or the listing side that nowadays you you not only have to pre-qualify the home but you have to pre-qualify the agent so that they also know what's going on in the process Good. is there a difference in the process depending upon which lender holds that loan whether there's a first whether a second mortgage involved that's um, a good question. there there is a process and that's why it's very important that um, we find out up front who the two lenders are so that we're able to start negotiating with both lenders up front so we get an, a set understanding. And um, HAFA, if both both loans participate, then automatically it's set in stone how much is given to the second. So all the guessing work is done. So that's why HAFA is such a great program for the, and because it's 6,000 or 6%, 6 whatever is less. And that is a given. Right. So. Something I want to ask that's really important. There's been a change in the law. I understand at the beginning of 2013, uh, beginning of next year, there's going to be some uh, changes to the short law deficiency, sure. short sale deficiency law, excuse me, um, in terms of a seller may have to declare that short, that, the, that the deficiency. deficiency in terms of income. How does that work? Yes, okay. So she's talking about the Debt Forgiveness Act. So it's, it's good until 2007, until 2012. And um, it's basically uh, allowing any seller who sells their property as a short sale, they're going to be forgiven the debt, the difference. Um, so that's the that's the debt forgiveness act. Now, 2013 is coming fairly soon. We're talking about nine months away. So it's very important that you contact us if you do meet that criteria, so we can figure out right now. Obama's uh, is trying to pass a new law to try to extend that for two more oh, years. Campaign season, huh? <laughs> so, we so they're in but the it, process. That, so. that would be nice. I mean, because uh, Steve, you and I talked before we did the show, and there's been a tremendous activity of short sales. In fact, Todd, you know, maybe in our wrap-up presentation, there, the sh I looked today's market there. The, the tons of short sales here in Melpita. So I know that this is an ongoing pro an ongoing need. Mm -hmm. um, the community is beginning to come back and the economy rebounding, but we're not quick quick enough to recover um, the huge loss to our uh, housing market. So that's correct. And what happens is that honestly, you know, this it's a tough situation for the homeowners going through this right now. And they really need somebody who they can trust and somebody who can give them the right advice because there's there's a lot of, you know, let's be honest, attorneys, realtors, 
loan people, uh, collections, calling them, sending a mail, and that's a scary situation. And um, we just want to make sure that they're getting the proper advice. And um, you know, there are two laws that came into play this year, which is SB 931 and SB 458. And those laws are very important that the homeowners must know that if you do do a short sale and the lender does accept your short sale, then they are waiving their rights for any deficiency. So that they're protected under the second loan. So that's very important. So some people are scared in that, oh, well, maybe I can't do a short sale. It's important that you contact us so that we're able to help you. Well, I know folks have got a lot of questions about it. You know, people who are in that situation, there's a stress and duress that's going on. And so you know, having someone who is a professional who can give you the good guidance is important because uh, oftentimes when you're trying to do it yourself, you're in the thick of it and it's difficult really to have the perspective and to have the experience that someone like you brings to that. Well, let me, let me just ask the question. So um, they're, in, they're in trouble and they get through this process. What kind of uh, issues go uh, in terms of credit rating how, how long does that trail with them when they end up doing a short sale and then want to get on with their life uh, a few yeah. years later I know we deal with that in the lending right. industry and but but yes. what what's the terms for that well right now the the terms are three years for the buyer to the seller to re be able to be able to buy again but um, I'm, I've been talking with a few other lenders like Chase and Bank of America and Wells Fargo, which are the big players in the industry. And if there's documentation that they can provide to the lender that is a serious hardship, which is like a laid off, or, and they can prove it and date it, they're, they may be able to buy sooner than the three years. Now, it's going to be an underwriter discrepancy, meaning that they're going to have to do a desk written under, how do you say that? Well, this it's actually is actually a manual underwriting. Manual underwriting. And, there you go. Yeah. The, and you and I have a had a trans or had a buyer that experienced that, and I think they were two and a half years into the short. That, sale. That's correct. Yeah, there, there is an exception. You can um, have a short sale on your record and buy as, as soon as two years. Okay. But you're right; it's underwriter discretion, okay. and there has to be a documented hardship such as medical or job loss. Perfect. And so. The, okay. You know, the rules on that are, are pretty specific, but again, you know, getting with the, the right advice on that is important. Uh, credit, I think that stays on your credit for seven years. Oh, does it? Yes. Wow, okay. Yes, as, wow. as any, um, any, any blemish on a credit report, it takes at least seven years to roll off. Okay, yeah. let me ask you uh, also, so what would be a difference between um, a short sale versus a foreclosure, a bank foreclosure? Okay, so, it's, um, so there are two types of foreclosure. So. Um, when you don't do anything and you just call the bank and say, come and pick up the keys, then that is called a deed in lieu of foreclosure. Okay. So you're basically 